Today I'm going to look at a few activities that we can do to work on hand manipulation, so some precise movements with our hand. And we're just going to use a few different things, some common items, just a pencil, some coins. When we do some of these precise movements with our hands, it's good to know that we have two sides of our hands. Our thumb, pointer, and middle are our pinchers, our skilled side of our hand. Our pinky and ring over here are our stabilizers. So if I'm going to write with a pencil, ideally I'm stabilizing over here and then doing my fine little movements with the front of my hand. Same thing for kind of some everyday things like putting in a button. You can see I'll go for a pinch to do that. So I have 10 coins here. So you'll want to get a good stack of coins and then challenge your child to pick up as many as they can one at a time. So no grabbing. Just that skilled pinch, and then I tuck it into my hand to hold them. So see how many I can get into my hand. And that forces us to separate those two sides of the hand. There we go. So now I have them all in. The next challenge is putting them back out one at a time. So I have to make this more visual and clear, I put 10 circles on a piece of paper. You can also use a piggy bank slot if you have that or make one with something like an old butter container putting a hole in the top and I slide them out of my hand this is a little trickier so it might take a little extra time one thing that you can do to uh, as you kind of get good at it is add some speed challenges so time yourself how fast can you do it or can you beat me and make some of these a race and so uh, got them all out here they are that is something simple that we can do, but we can also just use a pencil. Picking up our pencil can be a trick sometimes, getting the right start. And to do this, try to think of the A-OK -okay sign. So making a circle with our thumb and our pointer. Use that to pinch and then flip up our pencil. And with that, it kind of sets us up to hopefully be where we want to be with these first three fingers leading and also in the right spot of the pencil. So we don't want to be high up here where we don't have much stability and we might end up bending our wrist in. We want to be right at the end. Now, what we can do in this position is inchworms, challenging us to use those little finger movements to climb all the way up to the eraser and inch back down. So doing that a few times. We can kind of have them as warm-ups before we write, maybe 10 to 15 times before we get started. It may take a little bit of time at first, but this movement gets more fluid with practice. Next is rotating our pencil, so seeing if we can turn it. Going between our middle, pointer, and thumb. This is an important movement, thinking for writing, flipping over to erase. So I'm writing here, I make a mistake, I can quick turn, erase, without taking a lot of extra time putting it down, turning. Everyday life, think of a twisty top, being able to twist that off. So those are some exercises we can do with a pencil. Thinking about how these things relate to our pencil grip, a lot of times I see kids have a stiff grip. So I may see their thumb is out quite stiff. Their pencil seems to be standing straight up instead of tucking back. And ultimately, the most important thing is kind of your output. How well your writing is functional for you if it's too tiring or if it's clear. But grip can have some relation to those things. So if it's, especially for our kindergartners, first grade, graders, it's not a bad idea to try to correct that early and see if we can get some patterns that may be more efficient as they get older. So grip isn't everything, but it can be helpful to kind of set a nice foundation. When I have that kind of stiff grip or even a turning in, one little kind of a DIY pencil grip we can make just uses hair ties. It'll look like this when we're done, but I have some hair ties here. One will be for going around the wrist. So that one is just kind of our base. We'll take a second hair tie, loop it under. So you can see this best. Loop it under and then tuck to make kind of a extra loop there. 
This is a new hair tie, so it should pull the pencil back far enough so you can see it stops it from coming straight up. If it's not quite tight enough, you can always fold it in half first and then go through similar movements or kind of tie it like a knot and use one of the loops. Now, going forward from there, you can take a string and tie it on the bottom here and then include a bead. So the benefit of that is that if even with having the pencil pulled back, we still have too many fingers involved, we can encourage the pinky at least and hopefully the um, ring finger as well to stay tucked in. So their, their job is to hold the bead. So they tuck in and it prompts us to keep that good hold. This keeps our pencil back and also encourages us to keep our wrist nice and bent. So you'll notice that having a extended wrist is important. If we have our wrist tilted in like this, you'll feel some tightness here in your tendons and it's hard to get fine movements. So try picking up one of these coins with a wrist completely bent, it's awkward. So the extension helps. So keeping that pencil back, encouraging our wrist to stay back can be a way to do some writing. So if you do a little bit of writing at home and are noticing sort of awkward pencil grip, this may be a good way to practice some of the more efficient movements. I hope that's helpful and thanks for watching.